Here's the brief news from the world over this week. The Vatican has vehemently and repeatedly denied a report this week that Pope Francis has a curable brain tumor. The response came after a Tuscan daily published a detailed story claiming a papal helicopter took a world-renowned oncologist to examine the Pope in Rome. The f newspaper further quotes a hospital employee who claims that a dark spot was found on the Pope's brain. It is small, in the opinion of this hospital worker, not malignant, and does not require surgery. The Vatican on Tuesday and Wednesday condemned the report as seriously irresponsible and unfounded and went out of their way to emphasize that the Pope is well. English language spokesman Father Tom Rosica. As you can see from the Pope's activity today throughout the Synod, he is in very good health, working at an incredible speed, getting things done, and we are not concerned about that whatsoever. The editor of the paper that published the story said he anticipated the Vatican denial and is standing by the report. For the first time in a decade, Canada has a new prime minister. In federal elections held on Monday, 43-year-old MP Justin Trudeau beat out Conservative Party Prime Minister Stephen Harper. He also gained a liberal majority in Parliament. Trudeau, son of the legendary former Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau, took just under 40 percent of the popular vote in an election that saw Canada's highest voter turnout in over 20 years. Justin Trudeau is a Jesuit-trained Catholic from Quebec who is unabashedly pro-choice. As the Liberal leader in Parliament in 2014, he made headlines by refusing to allow pro-life party members a free vote on the question of abortion. Trudeau will take over as Prime Minister on November 4th. And Pope Francis this week pleaded for an end to the latest round of violence in the Holy Land. At his Angelus address on Sunday, he called for Palestinians and Israelis alike to reject hatred and work for peace. Clashes between the two sides have increased in the wake of a recent wave of stabbings by Palestinians against Israelis. Since the beginning of October, at least seven Israelis and 44 Palestinians have been killed in the West Bank and Gaza. The Israeli government has since built new safety barriers and checkpoints in the West Bank. In a statement, the Patriarch of Jerusalem, Archbishop Paul, said, quote, we must condemn this violence and avoid as much as possible the causes which lead other people to violence. He further condemned the government's separation policy, calling the security wall a disfigurement of the face of the Holy City. More on the Holy Land later in the show. And former Secretary of State Hillary Rodham Clinton arrived on Capitol Hill Thursday to testify as a star witness in the Republican-led investigation into the deadly 2012 attacks in Benghazi, Libya. In advance of her testimony, the Clinton campaign released a summary that said she is appearing before the committee to honor the memory of the four Americans killed in Benghazi. Once the hearing began, Clinton firmly defended her handling of the affair, saying she took responsibility for the attacks that killed Ambassador Chris Stevens and three others. She claimed she implemented every security measure that was recommended in a review of the incident. And Wisconsin Congressman and former vice presidential candidate Paul Ryan announced he would run for Speaker, Speaker of the House, but only with full support of the major Republican caucuses in the House of Representatives. The 45-year-old legislature said he hopes to unify what has become an increasingly divided body. On Thursday, the Conservative Freedom Caucus gave Ryan their support. The vote to elect the next House Speaker is scheduled for October 28th. And fallout from the Planned Parenthood fetal body parts scandal continues. On Monday, Texas banned the abortion giant from participating in the state's Medicaid program. The decision follows national controversy surrounding undercover videos in which the sale of fetal tissue is discussed and negotiated by Planned Parenthood employees. Governor Greg Abbott said in an interview with Fox News, the videos uncovered several legal violations including evidence that Planned Parenthood altered the abortion procedure in order to obtain fetal parts. And the nation's largest evangelical group has backed off from their unequivocal support of the death penalty. 
the National Association of Evangelicals, representing 10 million Christians and 40 denominations, approved a resolution stating that both those who support and those who oppose the death penalty can legitimately ground their beliefs in Christian ethics. NAE President Leith Anderson characterized the move in terms of evangelicals' larger advocacy for respect for life from the womb to the tomb. The decision does not reverse a 1973 resolution supporting the death penalty. The Pope, during his recent visit to Capitol Hill, called for an abolition of capital punishment. Overall, support for the death penalty has dropped some 20 points in the last 20 years, according to Pew Research. However, a majority of all Americans, as well as the religiously affiliated, still support it. And finally, an extremely rare 400-year-old Bible containing a rather unfortunate typo is up for auction. The Seventh Commandment in a 1631 edition of the so-called Sinner's Bible reads, Thou shalt commit adultery. Approximately a thousand copies made it into circulation before the spectacular omission of the word not was noticed. Anglican leaders were outraged at the time, and a furious King Charles I ordered them all burned. However, a few copies survived. The Bible is expected to fetch around $25,000. It's a good thing one of those didn't make it to the Synod on the family. It might have added another week to the small group meetings.